to royalty soaps, and yes, the title isn't clickbait. I don't do clickbait. This is one of the single worst soaps I have ever made on this channel. It's in the top three for sure. Now that's not to say we're not going to get a coconut soap in the Beach Bash collection. Don't worry, I reworked the whole thing to use a fragrance oil that didn't perform as badly as the one in this video, so you're gonna get the same design, it's just gonna smell a little different. And speaking of Beach Bash, the Beach Bash collection launches on June 5th, that is the first Saturday of June. I know we've been doing the second Saturday recently. For those of y'all who were around and watching whenever Snowmageddon happened, everything got pushed back a week because we literally couldn't make soap. Like we couldn't do it. There was no electricity here in Texas. But this is the first week that has like five months in it. It just fell right. We are back to doing the first Saturday of every month at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, royaltysoaps.com. So if you like this soap, if you like any of the others in the collection, well, now you know where to get it. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And without further ado, let's make the worst soap of all time. <laughs> Katie, you never make soap with milk in it. I know, but today I'm going to. I have absolutely nothing against milk soaps. Almond milk, rice milk, goat milk, coconut milk, cow milk. It doesn't really matter to me. However, for the sake of simplicity, I typically just do ice water and lye. It's really easy to prep. Uh, some people put milk in every single one of their soaps. I like to make it a special occasion. So that's the first thing I'm gonna add to my oils here. I'm just gonna add it in before I even add the lye water solution. I've also added some titanium dioxide to my coconut milk, so I'm just gonna blend that up real quick. Then I'm gonna dump that in. Blah, 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 blah. <gasps> it looks so cool. Gonna scrapey scrapey. Then I'm gonna blend this, and while I'm blending, I'm gonna pour in my lime water solution. So now that all the everything is blended up, I'm gonna pour off some accent colors. I fully expect for this soap to discolor. It's supposed to, I think the fragrance oil is going to make it do that. I'm not really worried about it. That's why I added some titanium dioxide in right from the very beginning. So now for the accent colors. I'm going to lighten this even more with this particular accent color. We're just gonna add in a little bit more TD. And for this accent color, we're adding in some 24 karat gold mica. So that's gonna give it a nice golden almond color. All right, I've added my fragrance oil, so let's go ahead and blend these up. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour this soap into here. I'm just gonna pour this on either side, just like so. I'm not gonna scrape this out completely because I like to put it on top and texture it as it sits up. And then I'm gonna pour the white right down the middle. Amazing, okay, so I'm gonna move these off to the side and we're gonna pour this into our large slab mold after this quick commercial break. And then I'm gonna pour right down the edge here, just like so. Texture on this is really weird and honestly it has me a little bit nervous. It was fully homogenous a minute ago, and now it looks like it might be separating, which probably has to do with the fragrance oil. All I can do is wait and see though. So I'm gonna scrapey scrapey out my big container. Hopefully everything is okay. Okay, I'm gonna put this on top. Put a little white on the top. This is very similar to like an oatmeal milk and honey soap. I love it. All right, now I'm going to put a little bit of that 24 karat gold mica on the top, just like so. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then I'm just gonna let this sit up for a little bit and I'm gonna come back and texture the top, hopefully, assuming that this actually makes soap. I'll tap it down. I think it's setting all right. Oh, I don't know. Mild separation always has me worried because it can either go one or two ways. It can separate just a teeny bit and then make great soap or it separates a lot and you get no soap. Okay guys, as you see, it does look like it's gonna set up. It's still, it's a little, well, maybe. I don't wanna say that it's gonna set up and then come back and be like, no guys, I was totally wrong. But that might be what ends up happening because as I'm pushing down, I think the inside might be curdling a little bit more. I just can't tell. Um, but I'm gonna texture the top anyway, just in case. Sometimes it really does take 24 hours to see whether a soap will actually set. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna hold my breath. Uh, if it doesn't set, I'll know it's probably the fragrance oil and then we'll move on from there. I'll just get a different fragrance oil, that's all. Just gonna continue to texture the top and I'm not just going one way with the texturing. I'm coming into and mashing it in different ways so that it's not all just one, uh, yeah, design. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to be all over the place. I want there to be zigs and zags and bigger dips and smaller dips. And then after I put in this last couple ones, I think that's it, I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz the top with rubbing alcohol. Right, just gonna spritz this all in place. I don't think it will uh, get very ashy on top. That's not my suspicion. Uh, we'll take these off so that it looks nice and pretty. Do any edges need wiping down? It doesn't look like it. it. Looks like it's pretty darn clean. I'll get the couple little stragglers here and then I'll bring you guys in for a close up. <laughs> Okay guys, this is what it looks like up close. Cross your fingers that this actually makes soap because it sure looks scrumptious and it smells absolutely amazing. We'll come back, we'll check on it in about 24 hours. I'm gonna let it do the full 24 just to make sure. <laughs> and then we'll come back and we'll try to split it and cut it into loaves, see what we get. After this quick commercial break, of course. Guess who's back? It's me. So basically, I waited like two hours, came back, and this is what I saw. A floating pool of oil. It's safe to say we won't be salvaging this one. But what I would like to know is who caused it. Was it one of the fragrance oils or was it the coconut milk? We're about to find out. So first of all, I'm about to out the fragrance oil. <laughs> Is it coconut milk by Crafter's Choice by AFI? <laughs> or is it, oh, this is so heavy, compared to Aroma Coconut by AFI? I don't, Caleb, you wanna cast, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna cast your vote? Which one do you think it is? I think it'd be pretty sad if the, uh, if they put by AFI on there and, the, and it uh, didn't work out. <laughs> I think it's them trying to imitate Crafter's Choice. I okay, be... so you think it's coconut milk, not coconut. I obviously don't have any idea. It was a 50-50 blend of coconut and coconut milk. So it really doesn't matter which one screwed it up. I don't know what we're gonna do with all of it. So basically what I did was I had Caleb whip me up a couple of batches. These are 16 ounces of oil. I'm gonna test both of the fragrance oils individually and I'm also going to test just a regular old coconut milk in oils with lye water soap, no fragrance oil at all, just as a, uh, what is that word? I'm literally control a control. Yes, that's right. This is the, we're gonna have one control. In fact, let's do the control one first. You, Caleb, can measure out the fragrance oil. I'll whip up the control. I thought that was the noise that came out of the fragrance oil container. <laughs> I was like, I have never heard that happen in my whole life. <laughs> okay. 
So let's do the control. First, I'm gonna add in the coconut milk. Dump, dump, dump. Then we're gonna add in the lye water solution. Look how teeny tiny, just for a little one pound batch. We're gonna dump that right in there. Blend it up, and if everything looks good, well, we will continue. Well, that looks great, and it's getting very warm. It's thickening like it's supposed to. Yeah, the problem does not lie with the coconut milk, which is great. So now we can try one of the fragrance oils. These are gonna make some really nice bars for my mom. <laughs> Who likes unscented coconut milk so okay I have cleaned my stick blender so nothing gets cross-contaminated the first fragrance oil we are testing is just regular old coconut by AFI this is the one that Caleb says he hopes it's not <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add the fragrance right to the oils because this is just you know one batch that we're doing here all right let see we'll just pour this right in let's blend oh caleb i feel like this might be the one <laughs> it's really really runny okay i'm gonna go ahead and just pour it in anyway i'm pretty sure this is the one but who knows maybe they both do it that would be really bad <laughs> Oh yeah, I can already see it starting to separate. <laughs> so fingers crossed that it's only this one, which is Coconut by AFI. Now we will test the third option, which is the Coconut Milk by Crafter's Choice. Okay guys, so the last melon. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pour the fragrance oil in. Also, just a clarification, both fragrance oils are from AFI. This Crafter's Choice coconut milk is a dupe of the one from Crafter's Choice. They're both AFI scents, and I will be leaving reviews on both of them so that other soap makers can beware, and they won't make the same mistake that I did of buying at least 10 pounds of the stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this up. Hopefully this one does okay. Oh, Caleb. Caleb, I think it might be both of them. No! I don't know. I'm gonna let this sit. It, it's, it looks okay. I don't see any separation. It's just really, really runny, which makes me a little bit worried. Work it to pieces! I will. <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing stuff on the edges. Oh no. Oh no. Look guys. Oh, it's all curdly. Oh no. Neither one of those fragrance oils are soap safe. Also, I do just want to say that whenever I thought this was happening, I did go look on the AFI website and they do say that they're soap safe and it also says that they're skin safe. So they have a maximum recommended usage rate in um, all of their applications. Soap was one of them. So Neither one of these fragrances from AFI should be used in soap making. I'm gonna leave these right here for the next, oh gosh, maybe 30 minutes or so. We'll come back and see what they look like, but uh, yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like. This guy is already separating out. This just doesn't look right. I'm just gonna let this sit for about, well, at least 18 hours or so. We're just gonna leave them in here overnight. We'll come back, take a look at them in the morning and see what we can salvage. Okay guys, I'm back about 18 hours later. And let me tell you, I am absolutely bamboozled. I have no idea what's going on. So as you can see, uh, we have soap, we have soap in all three containers. Now, this one is really, really squishy and also has some oil on the top, but it's nowhere near as bad as the other one that I made. So I don't know if it's a combination of the two fragrance oils that made it so terrible, but let's go ahead 
and just unmold everything. As you can see, I do have my gloves on. I also have my goggles on just in case there's still some unincorporated lye or something is still caustic. It shouldn't be at this point, but because these fragrance oils are making these things do weird stuff, I'm, I'm not taking any chances. Oh, oh, it looks worse. It looks worse down below. <laughs> so this is, this is not great. Um, you can see on the side, the separation. Oh man, look at that. You see all that separation in there? That is no bueno. We don't want anything to look like that. So I am starting to think that this has to be a combination of both issues. Like this one makes it really soft and squishy. That one separates really bad. I'm gonna try to get this one out. It's still so soft. Yeah, that is no good. You can see the texture on this really crumbly, really gross. Like that's that's not a soap safe fragrance oil. So again, let's chop into our regular old coconut milk soap. It feels very firm. It looks really good. And you can see the inside is absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and chop these up into, into soap bars. Let my mom use them. <laughs> Okay, let's cut into this one. I have, I have my doubts. I feel like it's gonna be worse on the inside. Okay, it's actually, it's actually not so bad. It's not so bad. I don't like the little pockets I'm seeing. I'm also seeing some unincorporated lye. It looks like that has maybe risen to the top. So there's just little bits like this that I find suspicious. I'm not sure why that happened. You guys saw how long I blended. There's no reason for us to have unincorporated anything or any spots like that. Yeah, you can see this right here, that, that's concerning. And also on the top of this bar, you can see if you look really close, maybe a little bit of wetness here. I'll show you on this one. This bar is a lot more obvious. There's a little bit of wetness on top. That's very suspicious. Um, I, I don't like that at all. That's called weeping. Um, we definitely don't want that. And then let's cut into this one right here. Yeah, you can see the texture on this is really, really bad. It's very crumbly. And again, as an encouragement for you guys, if you've ever made a soap and you're like, why is it so chalky and crumbly? I know I measured everything correct. It may not be your fault. It might just be the fragrance oil. Um, and that's what I'm working with here. I measured everything. This is just a fragrance oil specific issue. And it's pretty clear here that neither one of these fragrance oils should be used for soap making. I don't think any soap maker wants to find out that it was both of the fragrances causing issue instead of one because that's a lot of money down the toilet. Most of the time people like that don't accept returns on products that have been opened and used. So basically it's just a net negative. All the same, I'm really glad that it happened because I can use it as a teaching opportunity and so that you guys are reminded once again, I'm not perfect. Some of my batches turn out wonky and not everything goes according to plan every single time when I'm making soap. I have been making soap for 11 years. Yes, literally 11 years in September. It is Royalty Soap's 10 year anniversary this year. So I've been making soap a long time and I still have batches go wonky. So you shouldn't beat yourself up about it if you're a newbie or even if you've been making soap a while and it's happening to you too. It's really normal. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys like the little background. This is temporary. Honestly, these are all things that were just at my house because once again, all of my uh, decor and stuff isn't in. And I do plan on making pieces of decor for the back. And for those of y'all who are missing the colorant wall, well, I wanted to be able to change things out so that with each new month we have a fun new theme, but I will be making a colorant wall in a different spot in Holiday House. So you can look forward to seeing that in our upcoming renovation series. I hope you guys have an absolutely royal day today. Be sure you do something fun for yourself like going and 
buying a coconut and putting a straw in it and drinking it. Or going to listen to the original version of Lime and the Coconut. I bet they have it on Spotify. I don't care what you do, just be sure you do something fun for yourself and I will see you guys on Saturday. So until then, bye for now.